Okay, for top secret, we're gonna play one video and then we're gonna go really fast speed round with all these cutie pies you're working on. Yes. So we've been doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, this is on Lady Ada's desk right now, it's an Apple II Plus, so you can tell we have a lot of stuff going on. On Friday, we just published this video. Um, this will give you an idea of some of the things that's coming soon. Lady Ada, what is this? This is my pet octopus. No, this is the wiring um, for the feather floppy stuff that I was working on last week. I'm getting back to it. Um, this is the floppy drive. And this is, you know, wonderful and it worked, but you can tell the wiring is, it's it's a little bit wiry. So I um, quickly, quickly sketched together a feather wing PCB um, that has all the pins labeled to make wiring a lot neater. So I've got it plugged in now into my feather M4 and this is the 34 pin interface. And I got this nice cable which has even eight inch drive um, and you know, um, some five and a quarter maybe inch drive uh, socket support. And then um, you can easily debug by uh, plugging into the extra header. So if I want to like, you know, watch the index pin or the data pins and uh, best part is it still works. So um, now I can actually add uh, floppy write support because I feel more confident that my wiring isn't gonna be flaky. Um, so then you'll be able to uh, fully duplicate floppy disks. Okay, you're working on this pin thing. Um, well, I, you know, now what I do when I design a board, I actually add pretty pin support for that chipset if I haven't yet. And the reason I do that is it's really handy. Um, you know, when I assign all the pins, um, you know, I try to get a good range of like um, peripherals and I squared C's and SPI's and UARTs and ADC's. And it's sometimes really hard to keep track. And sometimes the schematic uh, symbol is wrong. Um, and so what's nice is using pretty pins to generate the diagram. I can really see like, did I, you know, cause I made a board in the first version, I actually assigned the wrong hardware SPI pins. Like they weren't on SPI peripheral. And so, um, this is, uh, you know, a, a handy way to do that. So I, I added S ESP 32 to okay. the repository. Um, I made a couple of, uh, BFFs, like little add on boards for cutie pie. They go in the back, a five by five NeoPixel battery, I started designing an NRF52840 cutie pie, but I kind of like don't really want to finish it. Um, I did finish the ESP32 cutie pie, which has a Pico, um, and the Pico chip has flash and PSRAM, uh, and this is a schematic, has a CP2102, um, and this is the pretty pants that I used to check to make sure. Actually, you know, in the end, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I forgot to put the DAC on A0 and A1, so I'm, I actually have to revise this, but um, I got close to being done. And then USB 32 S3, which is very, very similar to the S2 in pinout, but not identical, as I found out. A couple pins did move around, um, but I think I got it down. I think I got to figure it out. Uh, so the C3 uh, also, it's a different kind of chip. Um, not circuit Python friendly really because it doesn't have native USB, but you know, it's very inexpensive and Arduino supports it. So, you know, why not? And then I made a little, um, gamer add on, you know, I thought it would be fun, especially with the ESP32 has so many emulators ported to it because it's such a powerful chip. Okay. Let's get to questions. We got a bunch. Yeah. Good questions tonight. 